Unbound Theatre presents The Chronicles of Professor Cronomier, The Tudor Assassin. Written by Dario Knight and performed by Erica Sanderson. Chapter 3 The Vortex. Just before she left the laboratory, the professor had flinched as a bitingly cold pocket of air engulfed her. Slowly it drifted away, and she opened her eyes to take in her new surroundings. Though the winds whipping at the controls came from all directions, the machine was definitely hurtling upwards. It swayed and span in a giddying dance that made the professor whoop and cheer in wonder. On all sides, she was surrounded by what at first glance looked like the walls of some great upright tunnel, but as her eyes adjusted to the whirling of the machine, she saw that their texture was somewhere between streams of smoke and sheets of water, all of the most fantastic shades of silver and grey. The machine's rotation soon caught up with the copper blades hanging down from the top of the brass pillars, making it look as though they'd stopped. The professor checked the readings on the control panel, and inspected the bubbling liquid in the many glass chambers. The fluid settled from a frantic boil to a steady simmer. Above her, the hourglass continued to spin, but the static electricity had calmed. Satisfied that her machine had reached a state of equilibrium as it navigated the great vortex of space-time, she let go of the levers and dials and caught her breath. An ethereal wind whistled and sang around her. The silvery tunnel shimmered, emitting a sound like a thousand raindrops tumbling into a stream. It struck the professor as akin to standing in the middle of the most enormous waterfall. She felt the urge to reach out and let the water cascade over her fingertips, but the impulse immediately set her mind to work, and she recalled one of the experiments she intended to carry out whilst in flight. Rummaging in her leather bag, she found a small terracotta pot filled with soil. Sitting proud of the earth were the remains of a plant, a forlorn wilted stem and dried fallen leaves. She held the pot carefully in both hands. Sorry to use you as a test subject, old thing, but it might just do you the world of good. She steadily extended her arms and held the pot away from the frame of the machine. It edged closer to the glistening walls of the tunnel, and a single note rang up and down the whirlpool around her. The professor's eyes filled with light, as the withered stem began to rise from the soil and the leaves levitated to rejoin it. The outlines of petals formed in the shimmering depths of the vortex walls and drifted to the stalk, gathering together to form a brilliant orange flower. Astonishing! The professor gasped as she brought the restored plant back into the confines of the machine. Now, I wonder... She reached behind her ear and retrieved a stubby pencil. She held it out, just as she had done with the plant, and grinned at the sight of the glittering pencil shavings forming within the tunnel walls before wrapping themselves around the pencil until it was twice, three, four times the length it had been. A ringing noise caused the professor to glance up, but the space-time vortex disappeared into a pool of white light. Suddenly, her arm felt heavy, and she glanced back at the pencil to discover it had been replaced with a sturdy tree branch. "'Ah, a little too far back there.' Noted for next time. She placed the log on top of one of the instrument panels and then looked back at the hourglass. Though it continued to spin this way and that, she could see the sand inside steadily passing from one chamber to the other, unaffected by the spiralling timepiece. Now, there's a wet raspberry to the laws of motion. Sorry, Isaac. Not long to go now. No, wait. Can time travel take time? Oh, this is going to be a linguistic challenge, I can tell. The professor took a notebook from one pocket, grabbed a new pencil from another, and scribbled a few quick observations before a chilling roar ripped through her concentration. What the heavens? She spun around to look at the vortex, and somewhere, deep beyond the shimmering veil, a dark shadow had formed. It pulsed and heaved as it took shape, a silhouette obscured by the glistening eddy of time. It grew larger and more defined, as though moving towards the machine. The professor stole a glance behind her, and sure enough, more of these shapes were forming. She looked back to the first sinister gaunt figure. Two pinpoints of yellow fire glowed from where its eyes ought to be, and below them, another larger orb of light formed, a mouth, 
emitting the same retching scream she'd heard before. It fixed its gaze on the professor, who watched as the shadow grew what must have been an arm and sluggishly began to reach out. A screeching echo sounded as it finally penetrated the walls of the whirlpool, a ghastly array of webbed talons stretching out from the depths of the strange new world the professor had entered. The claws became a gnarled hand at the end of a bony, blackened arm. The jagged nails made their way towards the professor. Who... who are you? What are you? She gasped as her throat began to tighten. The creature, still blurred by the silver cascade, opened its mouth, and the yellow ball of fire sputtered and gargled. Gradually it formed a word in a sickly, skin-crawling rasp. Stranger. The professor searched for what to say. More shadows appeared all around her, growing larger and darker as they drifted forwards. I, uh, I'm a, I'm a, a visitor, a, a traveller. Professor. Her mouth closed, and her throat felt like fire. The webbed hand flexed its talons, but the professor made the first move, spinning round and hammering the controls to increase the machine's speed. The hourglass suspended above her span all the more frantically, firing out bolts of energy that struck the menacing shadow circling the professor. The creature's hand withdrew, and the dark shapes retreated back beyond the vortex walls, sinking down and out of sight as the machine accelerated upwards. The professor stood stunned for a moment then clasped her eyes closed. This too shall pass, she whispered to herself, and then opened her eyes. They fixed on the hourglass. The sand had almost finished transferring from one chamber to another. The journey was nearly over. Right then, arrival procedures. Ready? This was directed at the potted plant. Let's just hope we find a clear space to moor up, I don't much fancy landing in the middle of a brick wall, do you? She pulled a series of levers and turned more dials. The machine's rotation slowed, and the coloured liquid in the myriad of glass containers began to bubble more fiercely. Looking up, she could see the white light getting brighter and larger. The walls of the vortex shimmered and shone more brightly, and the icy pocket of air swelled over the machine again. Recalling the disturbing creature that had reached out to her from whatever lay outside the silver whirlpool, Professor Cronomier steeled herself. Like a captain sailing on a stormy sea trying to reach land, she feared being dashed upon the rocks beneath the waves. Her calculations had served her well thus far, and now she would see if the final equations truly balanced. As the coldness engulfed her and the white light of the vortex swallowed the machine, she pulled the final lever. The Chronicles of Professor Chronomio, an Unbound Theatre production. The Tudor Assassin was written by Dario Knight. It was performed by Erica Sanderson, with music by Kevin MacLeod.